morning and welcome to the Resurrection Lutheran Cooperative Ministry on this Baptism of Our Lord Sunday. Uh, we just have two announcements for you this morning. Uh, to, uh, January is Sanctity of Life Month, and so uh, Christ Luther, Mount Union, and Salem Lutheran are going to be uh, having uh, offerings for uh, life choices to help support that ministry. And then our other announcement is Youth Quake. Um, all youth interested in youth quake, need, youth quake need to tell Pastor Joyce or myself as soon as possible. Uh, youth Quake will be from February 4th through the 6th uh, at the Marriott Hotel in Coriopolis. And uh, so please let uh, Pastor Joyce or myself uh, know by, uh, by today, if possible, or even earlier, if you see this earlier. So... Uh, let us know so we can get everyone signed up before uh, we have to pay an extra fee. Uh, other than that, uh, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. We begin this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are in bondage to sin, sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and only by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord, have mercy. 
For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, Take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone. pray. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson is from the 43rd chapter of Isaiah. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, crush the Seba, in, in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you. I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He, he makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord sp splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. The second lesson is from the eighth chapter of Acts. Now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samara had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for he had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them and received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. As the people were in expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Christ, John answered them all, saying, I baptized you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus had also been baptized and were praying, the heavens were opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove and a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Well, hi, boys and girls. I'm so glad you're able to join us today. You know, we when we're in school or wherever we are, even whether we're kids or whether we are adults, we like to get picked for the team. How many of you understand that? Yeah. So when teams are being picked, oh, pick me, oh, pick me, oh, pick me. Yes, that's a common thing that we think about because we want to be chosen. Well, I've got news for you. Since you're baptized, as being a baptized child of God means that you have been chosen by, of all people, God. God wanted you. That's really a great thing to know, that God actually wants us. He goes overboard to find us. We have the story about the lost sheep, about 99 sheep are there, and one gets lost and he goes after that one sheep because each and every one of you counts. You are special. You are very special in God's eyes. And that's something for us to always remember how great we are in God's eyes because we are very special. He has chosen you. Now with that means that we have to act that way too. But we'll get to that as we learn in our lives to live as God's children, but how wonderful to know how much we are loved. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for choosing us, for loving us so much, and for wanting us. It is feels so good to be wanted. Thank you. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, here we are again today, meeting our old friend, John the Baptist, still wearing the latest of fashion statements with his camel hair outfit and still eating locusts and wild honey. Oh, yum. We can make all the comments we want to about his attire and his eating habits, but John has a purpose, a very specific purpose, a purpose given to him by God. John calls the people to repentance and makes no bones about it. Well, actually, tact is probably not a word that would be part of his personality at all. He has no problem pointing out the error of people's ways. And to those who think they know the scripture and tell others how to live, he calls them a brood of vipers. He calls out the ruling class and condemns them and loses his head over it, literally. But let's step back a bit. This is Elizabeth's son, a cousin to Jesus. And as Mary has gone to visit Elizabeth with both of them pregnant, I am sure visits continued over the time. Can you just imagine John and Jesus as young boys playing together, knowing that God has a very specific purpose for them? Both born for a purpose, a God-given purpose, one to call the people to God and the other to bring salvation to the world, to God's people. Now grown, the two men follow a predestined path. 
John becomes the forerunner, a cry coming out of the wilderness, bringing the mountains low and making the paths straight. John calls the people together, repent, prepare for the one to come, the one mightier than he is, the one that baptizes not just with water, but baptizes with the spirit. John prepares the people for the coming of Jesus, the savior of the world. And this point marks the beginning of Jesus's ministry. John calls for repentance and baptizes with water. Jesus is coming more powerful. And John says that he is not even worthy to stoop down and tie his sandals. And then Jesus comes to him to be baptized. This action of Jesus comes to be baptized really brings up a question of Christology. Who is Jesus? As John calls for a baptism or repentance of sins, why then should Jesus, who is perfect and sinless, be baptized? Well, we soon find out who Jesus is as the heavens open up and we hear the words, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The focus, of course, is on Jesus but let's broaden our look a little bit. Let's take a look at some things that we may not think about as, a, as our focus as we look at who is Jesus. Taking another look at John, dressed as he may be to remind us of Elijah, coming out of the desert, a leader, a shepherd who gathers his people, leading God's people, calling them to repentance and calling people to God. Then there's this water. Water is important to us often, and we don't think about it. We take it for granted. But life is as we know it cannot possibly be without water. We are made up of mostly water, and you can't hold it in your hand. Try it. It is meant to move. It cleans. It's a natural power force of the earth. If you have been to Niagara Falls, you can get a glimpse of that power yet we use it every day we drink it we wash in it and we play in it water is essential to us the israelites came out of egypt crossing through the waters of the red sea and when they were freed from the bondage of slavery and began their lives wandering in the wilderness and then came to cross the jordan river water again into the promised land the crossing the moving through the waters, life in the waters, our lives in the waters of baptism. And the significance of water itself being washed. Well, repentance is a washing. It is about letting go of all the dirt on us, in us, and through us. Letting it go, freed from the slavery of sin. It is about being cleansed. It is a death. Yes, it is a death, a drowning, the death of our old self, our old unrepentant self, but then being brought to new life, a new life with repentance in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Just as the Israelites crossed through the river beginning their journey, we begin our journey with the waters of baptism. Jesus comes to the river and enters the water. It is the beginning of his ministry. And our baptism is the beginning of our ministry. Yes, we are called to ministry. And that brings us and begins with our baptism. We are charged. We have been elected by God to be his. With that, we are given the responsibility then of being the children of God. Isn't it great to be one of his children? To know how much we are cared for and loved and wanted. Where we were brought to new life in Christ and given a mission, our baptism is not an end, but absolutely a beginning, a beginning of a life with Christ. Well, I'm baptized. Well, that's all I need. Uh, no, you do not. It is a beginning. And yes, at times a challenging one. Every day we are faced with the temptations of this world. The red dragon wants us desperately, but we are called to deny what we want and to follow where God is leading. These are without a doubt challenging times. Every single day we face the fall. 
that apple is dangling right there in front of us. Every day we are to remember not who we are, but whose we are, that we have been called by God to be his children and to follow him. When Jesus walked in that water and was baptized, the skies opened up, the spirit and a voice descended. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This is the Christ, the one that takes our sin and suffers for our sin, dies for our sin, but is resurrected so that we can have new life. In our baptism, we are not baptized with just water, but we are baptized with water and the word of God, the word of God. We have also been called by God to be his. Let us rejoice and be glad in that. Let us let our light so shine that we glorify our Father who is in heaven. That is our baptismal promise. Luther teaches that we are to make the sign of the cross the first thing in the morning. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We make the sign of the cross not just to make a motion, but to mark again, to remind us, to begin our day reminding us that we are claimed by God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And it is through our baptism that we are his. It is a joy to make that sign of the cross. I belong to God. God has claimed me, and I rejoice. Amen. confess our Christian faith by the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Most holy God, give us ears to hear your voice thundering amid the floodwaters of this world. Give us lips to cry glory. Give us hearts to love you above all things and faith to trust you in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Fill the church with your glory. Make it faithful in proclaiming your promise of salvation to those who do not know you. Let it rejoice when many repent, believe, and are joined to the body of Christ. We pray for the North American Lutheran Church, area congregations, and today for Holy Trinity Lutheran Church of Grove City and for the Reverend Sandra Toberman. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Guide, guard, and bless your persecuted servants throughout the world. Let your word be found upon their lips and in their hearts. By their faithful witness, lead even their enemies to the light of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Let your word thunder in this congregation. Unlock our lips to cry glory and proclaim your holy name in word and deed. Conform our lives to the image of Christ and let the light of his holy and forgiving love shine brightly in all we say and do. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Pour your spirit upon those who waver between doubt and faith, despair and hope, rebellion and repentance. Nudge them to take the small step of faith, even if it feels like a giant leap. Help us to walk with them along that path. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let your word shape the minds, hearts, and wills of our elected and appointed leaders. Fill all of us with your spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and fear of you, and joy in your presence. Banish those things which lead to hatred and suffering. Speak your word of peace to us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be the shield, light, and safety of all who risk their lives for the sake of others. Give them such integrity and strength of character that the innocent and defenseless may always look to them for help. When their work is done, bring them home in safety to their loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let your living word bring health, wholeness, and hope to all who suffer, especially all those who need before you either silently or aloud. Bless all who minister to them and let the radiance of your son's love gladden their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. prayer. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your powerful voice that splits open the tombs of your servants and calls them out of death into eternal life. Give comfort and strength to all who grieve. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And And also with you. Let us share God's peace with those that are around us. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
right and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, and that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. We holy holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Through Abraham, you promised to bless all nations. You rescued Israel, your chosen people. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise. And at this end of all the ages, you sent your Son, who in words and deeds proclaimed your kingdom and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night which he's betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, gracious Father, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. So now we pray your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord and of his resurrection that we who receive the Lord's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. in your kingdom and teach us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen God the Father. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Almighty God, that you've refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. We pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift, in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you uh, with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.